I have the Khan bow in my hand today. This is the latest bow from Paragon Bows and what an interesting bow this is. This bow is a fusion of two different eras. What Rob's done here is taken the best design elements from the Mongol conquest era from their bows and he's taken and he's fused it with design elements from the Turkish and Persian bows. And then what you do is you end up with something like this. Um, very interesting concept. I'm looking forward to reviewing this bow over the next few days and see how, how it performs. But before we do that, let's talk about what you get in the box. So the bow comes with one string in, an, in a tube and you also get a bow sock and warranty card with a bow spec sheet. The warranty card is you get 12 months warranty with this bow and on the warranty card you've got some really useful information which I think should be standard with all bows and that is A the um, poundage so this particular mo model is 48 pounds at 28 inches and 60 pounds at 31 inches the warranty card also has on it the minimum required grains per pound for your arrow so the minimum uh, GPP for this bow is 7.5 grains per pound and the maximum is 9 grains per pound um, and also in that booklet you've got the step through method how to string your bow and on that note I just wanted to quickly show you how easy it is to string this bow and I think the, the reason for why this bow is so easy to string is because even though it's quite I wouldn't say it's the highest poundage bow you can get but it's still relatively high is because the, the ease of stringing this bow comes from the design of the sears and the limbs, I think, because I was surprised how easy it is to just string the bow. Just really, the limbs bend so easily. You've got nice chunky sears to hold on to. And I think all of this just, and the design of the bow, just makes it so easy to string. Anyway, um, like I was saying before, it's very interesting, the concept behind this bow. It's, it's a creative um, you know, idea, fusing two different eras into one unit. But the question is, how does it perform? And we're going to be attempting to answer this question over the coming days. But I'd also like to add that I know that Rob is meticulous and thorough in his approach when it comes to building his bows, um, to the point where he's gone to the museums and had a look at the original articles um, where he's been able to take note of dimensions and you know various different um, elements of the bow. He's been able to see them firsthand, get a feel of them, and then go back and you know make his do his work and do what he does best. The bow retails at £450 and that's the price for the base model. You can have additional extras and the bow is highly customizable. You can get built-in arrow passes, you can get suede arrow passes, different types of wood in the handle. Um, the limb tips can be customized, different colors. Um, so yeah, there's a whole plethora of different options available which you can check out on uh, www.paragonbows.com. Um, but for me, the main question is, the idea is good, it's definitely creative, but the question is, how does this idea relate into reality? And this is what we're going to be testing over the next few days to see 
does this bow justify its 450 pound price tag and does this idea of fusing two different eras and producing this bow does this idea actually work day one of testing the Khan bow I'm here at my local archery club it's a target archery club um, I've got my Khan bow which is 48 pounds at 28 inches I'll be using a leather thumb ring with self-knocked wooden arrows. The plan is to shoot at the putter face from 20 yards, 30 yards, 40 yards, 50 yards and 60 yards and during the shoot I'll be looking out for limb vibration, hand shock, general draw experience, the accuracy of the bow and just observing how the bow performs and how the arrows perform. Let's begin by discussing the draw experience of the Khan bow. My draw length is 28 inches. The bowyer recommends that the optimum draw length is between 28 and 31 inches, although the bow can be drawn up to 32 inches. Now, at my draw length of 28 inches, I'm finding it to be a very smooth experience. I'm not experiencing any stacking whatsoever, and it's a very smooth and steady draw at 28 inches. There was an expectation or an assumption on my side that the draw experience would be springy and tight because of the short nature of the bow. However, this is not the case with the bow. The bow is very smooth and, and a steady draw and I think this must be down to the clever design of the sears and the limbs. In terms of limb vibration and hand shock, I haven't really sensed any with this bow to be honest. It seems to be flawless in that regard. Um, again, I think this is down to Rob's clever design of the fusing the sears and the limbs and the way he has done it has has really he's done a really good job with it. Um, this leads me on to the next topic, which is accuracy. And everybody has their objectives with archery. To me, accuracy is very very important. And with this particular bow, the first arrow I shot, I can just sense that this bow is going to be is accurate and can one can only develop further with his accuracy with a bow like this. Not only is the Khan bow very accurate, but it is also very fast. I can't wait to put this under the chronograph and measure the arrow speeds on this bow because I've got a really good feeling about the speed test on this bow. Okay, the objective of today's little exercise was to test out the Mughal bow at multiple different distances, ranging from 10 yards all the way up to 60 yards. So far, so good very impressed with the bow. It's able to cope with these self-knocked wooden arrows uh, quite comfortably. I think they're quite well matched to the bow to be honest. Uh, the objective was to drop the arrows onto the target. Weren't really looking to hone in on any specific rings on the puta and even at 60 yards I was able to comfortably drop the wooden arrows onto the puta face. Um, I think it will be able to cope with 60 yards and beyond quite comfortably. Um, that's due to obviously the pandage of the bow and obviously having the correct arrows matched to the bow. Um, so, so far, I would say I'm pleased with the performance of the bow. Yeah, definitely. Today we're at our local field archery club. Going to test out the Khan bow on some field archery targets. These targets will range between distances of 15 yards all the way up to 60, 70 yards. 
and it'll be interesting to see how the bow performs here yesterday we were shooting at a primarily target archery focus club which has targets on a stand and you're standing in the same place the targets always at the same distance and height um, here it's a, it's a bit more random and it'll be interesting to, interesting to see how the bow um, performs in this kind of field archery setting Right, having shot the Khan bow at three different targets, the first target was 48 yards. It's the first time I'm using this bow in, in this setting and I think this is the arena where this bow it will excel. Obviously because it's a compact bow, here you, you, you don't have level ground and you've got to adjust your footing and having a compact bow really assists your archery in this kind of zone. So on the first target I managed to land a few arrows in the scoring zone. Shooting at some small targets here at about 18 yards. The bow draws smooth, facilitating the archer with a nice, stable, steady shot. Target number four. Distance is about 32 yards and um, four pegs shoot one arrow at each peg and as you probably noticed in the video that uh, you've got trees and tree stumps in the way and the actual scoring zone is quite low on the boss all of this is done to make it obviously more challenging and now with a bow like this because it's so light maneuverability is so easy the handle is really comfortable and it just makes your shot the process of the shot so much easier when you've got a versatile instrument such as this. Right, we're on day three of testing the Kanbo. Today we're going to conduct a little speed test um, using multiple different spines and leather thumb ring.
Time to summarize my thoughts on the Carnbow. I've been testing the Carnbow now for over five days, various different settings, field archery, target archery. We even had a few shots on the pendulum, albeit at close range, did really well though, I must say. Now, I think the best way to summarize my thoughts on the combo would be to look at the initial objectives and claims made by Paragon Bows on their paperwork regarding the combo and then measure these against what I found during my testing. Now, so what does Paragon Bows say about the combo? They, they claim that the combo provides an excellent drawing experience with speed and stability. Okay, so let's break this statement down. Excellent drawing experience. I would definitely say the drawing experience is very smooth. Uh, it's, I think this is due to A, the very comfortable handle, which is, has nice beveled edges all around, which provides a lot of comfort during the, the draw experience. And also, I think there's a clever de design behind the bending section of the limbs and the sears, which you know, enables such a smooth draw experience. So I would definitely say the claim has been met there in my experience. Paragon claimed that this is a, a fast bow. I think this is more than a fast bow, this is a very fast bow. As you have seen in the speed test, we were achieving comfortably over 200 FPS. Even on one occasion, we managed to hit 221 FPS. It felt as if though the bow, as it was warming up, was getting faster and faster. Uh, grains per pound used were what the bowyer recommends, 7.5 to 9 grains per pound was a recommended weight and that's what was used during the testing. And comfortably over 200 FPS throughout the testing, even though I think the maximum poundage I was getting from the bow was 48 pounds. So to achieve that kind of speed with 48 pounds, I think is quite impressive. I think this puts this bow up there with some of the more expensive and dearer bows on the market, which I think you'd probably get similar speeds, if not less, in the same poundage, but yet they are a bit more expensive, sometimes even twice the price. Stability. The Boya claims that the bow provides a smooth and stable draw. Again, these two are kind of linked together. Stability, the technology used in this bow for the stability is the same which is used for the uh, Raider bow. And so if it's not broke, why fix it? The Raider Bow is a flagship model of the company and has done really well. And so the same technology has been applied in this and it does the job, works really nicely. I think the Khan Bow achieves the objectives outlined in the paperwork quite comfortably. Not only does it achieve them, but I think it exceeds these objectives. When I shoot this bow, I can sense the evolution that's taken place in this bow. And what I mean by this is Paragon Bows started off with the General Bow, the Crimean Tatar bow, the Solak bow, the Raider bow, and now the Khan model. And I can sense that the bowyer and the bows, and this is reflected in the bows, has been on a journey with his bows. And there's been a progression throughout this journey. And having shot some of these bows, I can sense that progression in this model. The Khan bow is a serious contender in the horse bow market. I think this bow, is challenging some of the leading bows out there on the horse bow market. I think it's great value for money because some of those leading bows are twice the price of this bow. But in terms of performance, you'll probably find that they're very similar in terms of arrow speed and draw experience. So I think he's done a fantastic job with this bow. It's great value. Performance is exceptional. And um, I think he's really hit the objectives that he outlined in his paperwork, without a doubt. And um, well done, Rob. Another fantastic job. And of course, no bow review is complete without a little test on the famous pendulum target.